In this video will show you how to print a stack to check if the stack is empty and also how to check if the stack is full and most importantly how to code these functions for the stack data structure and how they can be applied as I will sh also show you an example using the code for these functions explaining everything as I go on so that you understand what I'm about to show you. In this video, I'll be doing the array implementation of the stack data structure and I'll go through how to print function the is empty and is full functions, which will be used to check if the stack is empty or not. I'll also be using an example for each function with some animation to show you how these functions work. And after that, we'll look at the code for these functions and we'll run them in our project files as we continue to build our stack project. I am also about to upload the next video playlist about the linked list implementation of the stack data structure. So I strongly suggest that you click the bell next to the subscribe button so that you don't miss it or any other data structures or programming content that I'll upload. And also click the subscribe button if you haven't already and welcome to ACO Fundamentals. The goal of this video is to create three functions. The first one will be called on our stack, we'll print out the stack. The second one will check if the stack is full and the last one will check if the stack is empty or not. Now let's look at the first one. The first function will print out the stack and if you have printed out an array before, this will be the same. Let's look at how. This function will be a void function. So the first thing the function will check is if the stack is empty. And since we have elements in the stack, so we enter the if statement. The for loop will print out the values or the elements in the stack. So the first time the loop will print out two since the index variable i starts at zero and we increment i to one and then print out four and then increment i to two and then we print out six and we increment and print out eight. And finally we increment i for the last time and we print out 10. And we've printed out all the elements in the stack. The else statement would have been executed if the stack was empty. And in a moment, I will show you the actual stack program as we compile and run the code. Now let's quickly look at the next function, which is very easy. And it's the is full function. This function will check if the stack is empty or not. And this function will return true if the stack is full and false if it is not. The way we know if a stack is full is if top is equal to the size of the stack minus one. So in this case, this, the size of the stack is five and the last index value of the stack will be four since in C++ the index starts at zero. So if top is equal is four and the size minus one is also four, then the stack is full and then we return true. If the stack is not full, we will return false. Now the next function will check if the stack is empty. And if you're enjoying or getting value from this video, like this video down below and consider subscribing if you haven't. From the previous videos, you will remember that we first create an instance of a stack. The constructor will initialize the variable top to negative one because the stack is still empty when it is created. And so for this function, we'll check if top is equal to negative one. And if it is, it means that the stack is empty and will return true. But in our example, the variable top is, is equal to four. So we enter the else statement and we return false as the stack is not empty. So back in our project files, in the stack.ccp file, we'll create the function prototypes for the functions we want to create. The first one is the print stack function. This function will print out the stack. And this should be a void function. We will call it print stack. It doesn't take any parameters. And uh, let's create this function. So here we will write the logic of the print, fun the print stack function which will print out the stack. Okay. So it's a void function from this class. Okay. The 
first thing is we want to create an if statement and inside we want to check if top is not equal to negative one meaning that the stack is not empty and if that's the case we want a for loop which will run from zero and all the way to the stack size and i want to increment the counter every time so we'll print out the item at, in, at index i Then the for the else statement, we just want to see out that the stack is empty. And that's it for this function. Now let's go on to create the second function. This function will, will check if the stack is empty or not. And this function will be a Boolean function because it returns true or false whether this deck is empty or not. Okay, so it's a boolean function. It has a bool return type. It doesn't take any parameters. Uh, nope. I want to. Okay. Well, actually, let me just write the second one. The is full function. And this function will check if this deck is full or not. And is also a boolean function because it will return true if the stack is full or false if it's not. So now let's go ahead and write the logic for the first one. Now the first function I'm going to do is the is empty function. Now this function will check if the stack is empty or not and return either true or false. So it's a boolean, it has a boolean return type from the state class. Now, if, if top is equal to negative one, that will mean that the stack is empty, so we'll return true. Uh, need to check in if the stack is empty because if top is equal to negative one it means that nothing has been added to the stack okay now for the else part of statement of the function we just want to return false because that would mean that the stack is not empty okay and that's it for this function now for the second function there is full function this function will check if the stack is full or not and will return either false or true so it's a, it has a boolean return type and is full now for this function we will first want to check if we want to check if the stack is full so if top is equal to the size of the stack minus one okay and if that's the case we want to return true that would mean that the stack is is full else we just want to return false meaning that the stack is not full okay and that's it so let's go into the main.cp file to test our functions first we need to create an instance of the stack i'm gonna call it my stack so we need some elements in the stack so we need to push in some items i'm gonna first push in two then i need a few more elements uh, we're using the push function which we've implemented in the previous videos so we'll push in two four six eight and ten now let's see if we have any errors first so we compile okay we don't get any errors okay that's fine let's test one of these functions let's just let's try and print out the stack okay so we call the print function check and 
and we've printed out all the elements inside the stack but we're also getting another an extra value so oh it's because of the which we shouldn't have an equal sign there. now let's compile again and now we get all the elements inside the stack okay so now we can test the other functions we've created since this is return uh, the return boolean function the boolean values we need to do some checking first now so if so if the stack is full if it returns true we want to print out a statement that says uh, the stack is full okay and then if it if we, if we return false just want to say the stack is not full okay and we get two values i've forgotten a statement that should have been okay let's combine We get that the stack is full okay now let's try the is empty function and if it's full we're going to say that it's empty oh i just realized i made a mistake i should have said that it, the stack is not full but it's fine in the previous attempt and we get that the stack is not empty because we actually have elements inside the stack. Now that we've covered the print function, the is full function, the is empty function, we can continue to the linked list implementation of the stack data structure on the next video. And we'll start with how to create a stack using linked list. And we'll also start with the push function. And I'll show you the code with some examples so that you understand. Now please take 10 seconds to click the subscribe button and the bell next to it if you haven't already because that helps me to grow this channel and you won't miss any videos I upload that may help or entertain you in the near future. And you can support me by checking out my Patreon page. I'll leave the link in the description below. And thank you for staying with me until now and welcome to Eco Fundamentals.